Welcome to Gateway's live update for today, which is Thursday, the 18th of June. Now, we welcome you aboard, and it's great to be back. We had fun yesterday with my mother-in-law. She was more talkative before we did the broadcast, but it was a lot of fun. You can watch that yesterday's archive if you want. If you don't want to, don't worry about it. But um, today we're back in Ephesians 5, Last two days we were in 5, 18 and 19, which says, Do not be drunk with wine, which leads to debauchery, but be being filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord in your heart. And then today we're on the very next verse, which is verse 20, giving thanks always and for everything, to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is a real important thing. Giving thanks. And welcome, Lynn. Giving thanks. When the Bible talks about giving thanks, it means exactly what it says, to give thanks. Giving thanks is throughout the whole Bible. Oh, yes, you could think of the psalm. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good as love endures forever. Giving thanks. Thanksgiving. Now, I'm grateful. I grew up in a country which, until this last year at least, we had a day. We have the third Thursday in November, which we designate a whole day to giving thanks. And that comes from the Feast of Tabernacles, which is also a time of thanksgiving. The Lord is really big into thanksgiving. I know like a lot of people aren't, Americans might not be, but it's a real big deal to the Lord. That's why I worry when I see the last couple generations that are born are very thankless kids. Maybe you've seen them. It's because we get them so much. We buy them phones and iPads and game systems, and, and they, they just feel entitled. And, 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 and it's really bad. We need to be giving thanks, like Lynn says, each day 24 hours. God wants us thankful. He wants us thankful. And again, you can think of lots of passages in the Bible and there's no way to get around it. The Hebrew word to give thanks means exactly what it says, to give thanks. Just like your mommy taught you when you were little. Hey, Joey, if they give you a glass of water, what do you say? Thank you. When you get a Christmas gift, what do you say? Thank you. That is to be the attitude of the believer, not just the words, but the attitude of them. Thankful to God. God gives me all the time. You see that in Moses. You see it in David. You see it in Daniel. Thanksgiving is a major part of a believer's life. In the New Testament, Jesus. Jesus taught us to give thanks. When Jesus fed the multitudes, the different times he did it, it says every time he took the bread and what? Gave thanks. Now the word that he says in Greek is Ephkaristis, Eucharistus, Eucharist. He gave thanks. That's what Jesus did. The first thing he did every time he ate was to give a, a Jew. When they pray, even those who use uh, in rabbinic Judaism today, they say this. They'll say, I'll do it in English. They'll say, blessed be the Lord, the king of the universe, who has given us bread from the ground. The same thing Jesus would have prayed. There's something like it. Really, you might have grown up like I did. We said every night at our dinner table, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless the Lord, and these I guess we're about to receive from thy bounty through Christ the Lord, amen. And that's what we were taught, just sailing through saying those words, which could be meaningful if you listen to them. When I became a Christian, every time we eat, every time I would have something, I say, thank you, Father. I always give thanks. You, we always need to give thanks. And listen, I want to tell you the truth about me. I don't give thanks enough. God wants me to give thanks. He says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, in everything is give thanks. In every situation, give thanks. It says in Colossians chapter 2, where he, passage I mentioned on Monday, where it says, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, it's Colossians 2, 6. Just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue in him, root it up, build him, and grounded him overflowing with thankfulness. You see, God wants me to overflow. He wants it to come out. 
the thankfulness. It's something that keeps coming out. I, I give thanks, and it comes out more and more. It just comes out. I give thanks. You give thanks. We give thanks. So thankfulness is something that should always be pouring out of my life, pouring out of your life. It should be a natural flow. It shouldn't be something that, oh, I got to pray before I eat. No, it should be something, thank you, Lord. Thank you for thinking about me. Thank you. That's what God wants, a thankful heart, a thankful heart. You guys are older, as old as me might remember the old Petra song from 1986. I have a thankful heart that you have given me. And that's what God wants. God wants my heart to be thankful. Not, listen, not just my mouth. It's from my heart, it should overflow. Just as we were talking about the fruit of the Spirit overflowing out of our lives. It really should be. And if it's not, there's something wrong. And you know that. You know you should be giving. You know you need, you need to be giving thanks more than you do. We're going to be giving thanks for all eternity. So thankfulness is an important thing, as I mentioned. When I read through the Psalms, giving thanks to the Lord. When I read through the prophets, thanks to the Lord. God wants thanks. That's what he wants. God deserves thanks. Again, it's just like your mommy taught you when you were little. What do you say to Aunt Susie? Thank you. God wants us to have that attitude flowing out from our hearts. That's what worship's all about. Now, on this Sunday, we're going to be talking all about worship and the importance of worship for Father's Day, because it's he's the Father. But worship, giving thanks, that's what worship is. Glorifying God, praising Him. He inhabits the praise of his people. That's the Lord. He inhabits the praise of his people. He loves us. He pours his life through us. And so we praise him. We live in a thanksgiving and worship, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. I, I can worship God anywhere. We live in that. And as a believer, I'm always, as Lynn said, giving thanks each day, 24 hours. It's something I do all the time. It's something that we all should do all the time. We should give thanks. Sometimes we need to train our mind. But other times it just comes naturally. And that's what God likes. God, oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, I, I don't deserve this blessing, Father. That's what God wants from me and from you. In everything, give thanks. In every situation. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. God is good. And again, I'm glad that we can emphasize giving of thanks all the time, not just the third Thursday of November. But we can do it all the time. Can't we? We can do it all the time. Yes. And Lynn's singing the hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. And that's right. We can do it any time. You don't have to be in church to worship. I have some of my best worship when I'm driving on a long hour car ride. And I pop in a worship tape and I get into it and I have to pull over because I'm crying so hard. So you don't have to be in church. You don't even have to have the worship tape. I could do it by myself. That's what God likes. It comes from me. Where the pure words out of my heart pour over to him who is good, how he's good. And as we said yesterday in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing make melody in my heart to him. The giving of thanks pouring out all the time. It's a good thing. God is good. And we can give thanks wherever we are. Because he is good. Amen. And it's great to give thanks to God. It really is. It's good to give thanks. The Bible says it is good to give thanks to your name and make 
praise to your holy name. It is good. It is a good thing. It is good to thank the Lord and sing to him in the night seasons. And on and on, we can go through the whole book. We can go through the whole book. And this is a book of thanksgiving to God. It's a redemption story, how God purchased the people for himself. But we can go through the whole book, we really can, of how to give thanks. And we're going to do that right now as we pray, as we do every day at this time. And we're going to pray thanksgiving to God. So I want you to join along with me. And we're going to take the first few seconds of the prayer to give thanks to God. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord. And we thank you for all the blessing, Lord. We thank you for life. Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for each day. We thank you, Lord, for your presence and for your spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for salvation. And most of all, Lord, thank you for Jesus who loved us and gave himself for us. Thank you. Keep a thankful heart in us, Lord. May we be thankful always. We praise you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We thank you. Lord, bless this planet, Lord. And please, Lord, as we're thanking you, we ask you, Lord, that you would destroy coronavirus, that you would completely destroy it off the face of the earth, Lord, that you would destroy it, that it would never return, Lord, that there would be no resurgence, just that you would destroy it, Lord. It's plagued us long enough, Lord, as. And I know you must really be discouraged with the world, Lord, because their hearts are hard and they don't turn to you, Lord. But for the sake of your people, for the sake of us who call upon your name, Lord, we ask you to destroy this virus, Lord. And Father, we lift up everyone on our prayer list. Those who suffer with coronavirus to heal them. Those who've overcome it, we give you thanks, Lord. Thank you for Kyle, Lord, for redeeming him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for each one. Thank you for brother-in-law Matt, Lord, and others who have overcome coronavirus. You are awesome, God. You are awesome. And as David said, Lord, we thank you for you are awesome in your sanctuary. We thank you. Lord, please bless those with other struggles and issues that they have, Lord. Please Answer your people, Lord, as we touch and agree and pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. And again, thank you for joining us in prayer. Don't forget, 9 p.m. every night, we gather independently and we pray again. And we again, I think there's power when we do that. There's power. There really is. If we pray and we give thanks. Giving thanks means so much. It really does. If we could just give thanks more. You know, it's really discouraging when I see some people, uh, people have been Christians for 20 years, and you go to their house for pizza or something, and, and nobody gives thanks anymore. And it's just a sad thing. But see, it isn't that they're not doing it. Oh, you shouldn't do that. It's a condition of the heart. Thanksgiving needs to come from the heart. Every breath I take. Every thought I have God, that God allows me to live, I need to be thankful for. You need to be thankful for. We need to give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Let us be thankful. Really, really put that upon yourself. Well, we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time, same channel, at noon, as we bring you our live update from Gateway, uh, here, back in the office, and then on Saturday, probably be from home or outside if it's a nice day like I did last week. 
And then don't forget Sunday. We don't. It's the only day of the week we don't have our 12 p.m. broadcast because we have our 10:30 a.m. service, which we will still, even though this Sunday is our soft opening. That means yes, you can come. Yes, you can join us. Doesn't matter who you are, where you are. You can come and join us. We're going to stay distanced. We're going to wear our masks when we come in the service because we did promise our government officials we will be wearing our masks. So masks and staying distance, no touching, hugging, kissing, shaking hands. We don't do that. We will not hand out a bulletin. We're only going to do a PDF. That means portable digital format uh, that you get in your computer or your device. That's how our bulletin will be distributed for the time being. When we take an offering, the guys are going to hold the basket so you don't touch it. And same thing during communion. We're sterilized cups that are individually filled with fruit of the vine and the bread that's broken with gloved hands will be served. And you just reach in and take it. Don't hold on to the communion ware because of our social distancing. And so we encourage you to join us Sunday for Worship in the Word. It's going to be a great time. It's going to be Father's Day. And we're not only is it our soft reopening, but we're going to be celebrating the Father. That's who we're going to be worshiping. Just what we were talking about today, Thanksgiving. But in a great corporate atmosphere, you're going to love it. And we look forward to seeing you. Every one of you, we look forward to seeing you here, worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you for joining us. And we will be back tomorrow at 12 noon until we greet you on the morrow. May God's richest and blessed be yours.